In a sense, you've been a historian uh, as you've gone about your work. And uh, let's talk first a little, if we may, about your book, The Gutenberg Galaxy, where you argue that for a long time, without actually understanding it, we've been living in a, a, a culture which, in which our whole way of looking at the world has been determined by type, typography, by mm. the successiveness of print and so on. Would you like to enlarge on that a bit? Well, I remember I decided to write that book when I came across a piece by J.C. Carruthers, the uh, a psychiatrist on the African mind in health and disease, describing the effects of the printed word on the uh, African populations. It startled me and uh, des uh, decided me to uh, plunge in. But the, we, we have a better opportunity in uh, seeing our old technologies when they confront uh, other populations uh, elsewhere in the world. The effects they have on those people are so startling and so sudden that we have an opportunity to see what happened to us over many centuries. Yes, which we couldn't see because we're inside mm -hmm. the system. Yeah. Uh, don't you say that um, what happened was that we got used to having our information processed uh, as it is in, um, in, in print. That is to say, it's set out successively, whereas at the root of your thoughts, perhaps, there's the view that uh, we can see the world as an image instantaneously, but that we've chosen under the pressure of a technology to set it out successively like a, a block of print. Well, every technology has its own ground rules, as it were. It decides uh, all sorts of uh, arrangements in other spheres. The uh, fact of uh, script and uh, the ability to make inventories and collect data and uh, store data uh, uh, changed uh, many uh, social habits and processes uh, back as early as 3000 BC. Uh, the, uh, however, that's about as early as it, uh, as it uh, scripts uh, began. The, uh, the, the effects of uh, rearranging one's experience, organizing one's experience by these new extensions of our powers are quite unexpected. Perhaps one way of putting it is to say that a writing represents a high degree of specializing of our powers. Yes. Uh, compared to preliterate uh, societies, uh, there is a considerable concentration on one faculty when you develop a, 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 skill, a skill like scripting. And this is the visual, what you call the visual. Yes, faculty. this uh, this is a highly specialized stress uh, compared to anything in uh, ordinary oral societies. There, there have been many studies made of this in various ways. But in our own Western world, the rise of the phonetic alphabet seems to have had a bunch to do with platonic culture and the ordering of experience in the terms of ideas, classifying of data and experience by ideas. You mean that, the, that sight has become the preeminent sense, as it was for Plato, oh. and it went on being so in so-called civilized as opposed to in, primitive societies. Increasingly so. Uh, to reach the climax with, uh, with the invention of printing. Printing stepped it up to a considerable pitch, yes. Now, how would you, how would you describe the, the uh, uh, impact of the invention of the printing press? Give us some instances well, of what happened as a consequence of this. It created almost uh, overnight, it created what we call a nationalism, what in fact, in fact uh, effect was a public. The uh, or old uh, manuscript forms they were not sufficiently powerful instruments of technology to create publics in the sense that print was able to do. Unified, homogeneous, reading publics. Everything that uh, we prize in our Western world in matters of individualism, and separatism, and uh, of unique point of view, a private judgment, all those factors are highly favored by the printed word and uh, not really favored by other forms of uh, culture like radio or, and, uh, or earlier by even by manuscript. But this uh, stepping up of the fragmented, the private, the individual, the private judgment, the point of view, all, in fact, our whole vocabularies underwent huge change with the arrival of such technology. Yes. Could I ask you now about the, the, the technology which, on your view, is superseding it and which is having its own effect on our lives, uh, comparable with, but of course entirely different in kind to the well, Gutenberg technology. The Gutenberg technology, technology was in mechanical to uh, an extreme degree. In fact, uh, it originated a good deal of the later mechanical revolution, um, assembly line style, and uh, the fragmentation of, uh, of operations and functions uh, as, the t as the very rationale of industrialization. Yes. Uh, this uh, fragmentation had begun uh, much earlier with uh, 
uh, after the hunter and the food gatherers with Neolithic men. It, I suppose in an extreme way one might say that Gutenberg was the last phase of the Neolithic revolution. Uh, Gutenberg plus the industrial revolution that followed was uh, a pushing of specialism that came in with the Neolithic man, the uh, uh, agrarian revolution, a pushing of specialism all the way and then suddenly uh, we encounter the electric uh, or electromagnetism, uh, which seems to have a totally different principle, is it, for, uh, for some people feel, an extension of our uh, nervous system, uh, not an extension of uh, merely of our bodies. Mm. The, uh, if the wheel is an extension of feet and tools of hands, back, arms, uh, the uh, electromagnetism seems to be in its technological manifestations an extension of our nerves and becomes mainly an information system. It is above all a feedback or looped system. Yes. The peculiarity, you see, uh, 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 after the age of the wheel, you suddenly encounter the age of the circuit. Yeah. Uh, the wheel pushed, pushed to an extreme suddenly acquires opposite characteristics. Yeah. This seems to happen with a good many technologies, that if they get pushed to a very uh, dist uh, distant point, they reverse the characteristics. What difference is the, is the electric technology making to our interest in content, in what, in what uh, uh, the medium actually says? It's a very common business, uh, I'm sure, but uh, one of the effects of switching over to circuitry from mechanical uh, moving parts and wheels is an enormous increase in the amount of information that is moving. Yes. You cannot cope with vast amounts of information in the old fragmentary classified patterns. You tend to go uh, looking for mythic and structural forms uh, in order to manage such complex data and s moving at very high speeds. So the uh, electric engineers often speak of pattern recognition as a normal need of people uh, processing data electrically and, uh, and by computers and so on. Need for pattern recognition. It's a need which the poets foresaw uh, a century ago in their drive back to mythic forms of organizing experience. Well, here, here we are, a couple of, of archaic literate men, Gutenberg men, talking on the television. Um, what is the audience uh, getting from this? Is it, is it listening to what we're saying or is it, is it feeling the impact of a new electric medium? There is a book called Is Anybody Listening? Uh, it's, a, it's what worries the advertising men a great deal. Uh, the, uh, the idea of feedback, of being involved in one's, uh, participating in one's own audience participation is a natural product of this circuitry. Yeah. Everything, everything under electric conditions is looped you become folded over into yourself, into your, your image of yourself changes completely. In your uh, other book, the more recent one, where you, understanding media, where you go into all this, you use as a kind of slogan, I think, the expression, the medium is the message. Would you like to illuminate well, that? It, it, I, I think it is more satisfactory to say that any medium, be it radio or be it wheel, uh, tends to create a complete new, completely new human environment. Yeah. The human environment is, uh, as, uh, as such, tends to have a, a kind of invisible character about it. Uh, the unawareness of the environmental uh, is compensated for by some attention to the content of the environment. The uh, uh, environment as a, a merely a set of ground rules and uh, as a kind of uh, overall uh, enveloping force gets very little recognition as a form, uh, except from the artist. I think uh, our arts, if you look at them in this connection, do throw quite a lot of light on environments. The artist is usually engaged in uh, somewhat excitedly explaining to people the character of new environments and new strategies of culture necessary to cope with them. Blake is an extreme case of a man who was absolutely panicked by the kind of new environment that he saw forming around him under the auspices of Newton and Locke and uh, industrialism. He thought it was going to smash the unity of the imaginative and sensory, uh, sensory life all to bits. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the, uh, the artist, uh, uh, what he was uh, insisting upon in his own lifetime became uh, a, a quite a popular and uh, widespread movement later on. Yeah, can, can I return mm. to television? Because here we are, where uh, whoever's listening to us is also mm. undergoing the impact of television at the moment. On, on your view, they, they're all deceiving themselves insofar as they're paying attention to what we are saying. Because uh, what, what's going on uh, is a medium which is in itself the image uh, that they ought to be concerning themselves with. The medium of television has many characteristics which have been unheeded. 
Uh, mostly it is seen under the aspect of movie form. The TV camera does not have a shutter, does not take pictures. Uh, it handles, uh, it uh, picks up, as radio picks up, the TV uh, camera picks up its environment, handles it, it's, uh, scans it, and the effect of the TV image is iconic in the sense that it shapes things by contours rather than by little snapshots. Now, this is one, one of the words that you, you use a good deal, iconic. I think we'd better be the, clear yes, what, what well, you mean by I it. think of it, again, to, uh, to uh, tie in with Blake, his whole insistence upon the engraved, the highly patterned and highly uh, sculptured forms and images. That, I, the iconic in that sense is very low in visual quality, very high in tactual quality. Active touch, not uh, cutaneous, but active touch, as the psychologist So uh, you, you call television a tactile medium? Uh, iconic medium. Okay. Uh, having uh, much in common with the cartoon for which it is ideally suited, much more, uh, and much more well suited yes. than for uh, pictures. Um, uh, if you, f you feel that uh, we are going to have to come to terms, or we are coming to terms, much more and typographical man with this kind of, uh, mm. of instantaneous image. In, in, and I'd like now just to ask you about the distinction that you draw between different kinds of media within the electric technology. Yes. You call some, such as television, cool, and some, such as radio, hot. Now, yes. what does this mean? It um, has to do with the slang, uh, the slang phrase, the hot and the cool, which um, puzzles many people. Uh, the way it's used in slang uh, reverses the meaning of cool. Uh, cool uh, in the slang form has come to mean involved, uh, deeply participative, deeply engaged. Everything that we had formerly met by heated uh, uh, argument is now called cool yeah. in slang. Cool, though the idea that cool uh, it has reversed its meaning, I think, uh, has some bearing on the fact that our culture has shifted a, a good deal of its stress uh, into a um, demand that we be more committed, more involved in the situations in which we ordinarily work and experience. Uh, a, a cool medium is one in which the, the definition is low and the audience has to work and supply yeah. the gaps. Well, a like a, medium, ca a cartoon, you see, that yes, we, you were mentioning before, yeah, this is uh, real cool. Yes. Well, uh, jazz, uh, as compared with classical music, is, uh, has many uh, of these aspects of uh, discontinuity and very much room for fill-in. Yes. But where the information or data uh, con uh, level is low, uh, the fill-in or participation is high. If you fill the situation with complex data, uh, the uh, opportunity for completion fill-in is, is less and uh, participation is less. Now, this uh, uh, reminds me to ask you what I think is pretty important about your work, that if you've got phases like this, which are determined technologically, uh, one can not only speak about the kind of uh, uh, the state of affairs we now have, one can also, to some degree, do some prediction. Now, I think in understanding media, you sometimes write as if we got on, if we pushed on deeper into electric uh, technology than we actually have. Uh, but you do venture some predictions about the kind of life, the kind of quality of feeling that we're going to have with the new alteration in our senses. Could you say something about that? Well, I, I remember when I was here two years ago, after a long absence, I was quite startled at the uh, uh, upsurge of regional dialects in England. Uh, as compared with uh, 20 years earlier, and uh, the relative decline of standard uh, and uh, homogeneous English, and the quite uh, uh, proud uh, display of uh, dialects that I had hardly heard before when I lived here. This uh, uh, drive in depth toward re a regional depth of culture is a normal feature of electronic forms because of this circuitry that involves us deeper and deeper in ourselves. The, the French separatists, for example, at the present time in Quebec, are very much related to this new image they have of themselves in television, a depth image. The vision of the future that uh, your book could leave one with is uh, one in, uh, a big brother image, in a sense. You speak of, of for example, uh, programming uh, cultures. Pro for instance, you say that if the South African uh, scene looks like getting too 
hot because of an overdose of radio. We program a lot of television, cool them off. Uh, this kind of interference with uh, uh, what the typographical literate man calls uh, we human have, rights. Uh, we have never stopped interfering drastically with ourselves by every technology we could latch on to. Mm. We have uh, absolutely disrupted and you think this might our lives over and over again. Lead us into a kind of electric totalitarianism. No, I think uh, no. I think the uh, uh, logic, un, un, if unimpeded, the logic of this sort of electric world, is stasis. Yes. Oh, and out, uh, out of this, I've, I'm, 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 oh, forgive yes. me for interrupting again. Yes. I was asking, where, where do you see? Uh, is there a terminus, or should we always go from the thesis of typography to the? Hmm. I think if there is a logic, and a hopeful one, that appears in this, it is the dispelling of all unconscious aspects of our lives altogether, that we, uh, in order to live with ourselves in such depth, in such instant uh, feedback situations, we have to understand everything, so that our easy going, uh, lying, uh, lolling about in the lap of the unconscious, cannot endure. Uh, that we will have to take over the total human environment as an artifact. But it seems to be forced upon us. The, uh, the need to become completely autonomous and aware of all the consequences of everything we're doing before the consequences occur is where we're heading.